Welcome to another edition of Joe's Record Store. Uh, uh, out of my vinyl collection, I'm going to talk about TNT, which I have uh, two vinyl records of. Um, this one in front of me is uh, one of their uh, most famous albums, Tell No Tales. It's not their first one, but I think it was their first commercial breakthrough. Um, any of my... Uh, T other fellow TNT fans, if I'm incorrect on any information I'm uh, giving, you know, please uh, feel free to correct me in the comments or wherever. Um, but um, at this, uh, while I was a kid, I was living in Germany at the time, and you know, I love hard rock and metal. Um, I actually bought this album. Actually, I had it on cassette when I was a kid, and then, you know, years later, I found this one and uh, Intuition on vinyl, and, you know, since I love those records, you know, so much growing up, I, you know, I had to have them. And, you know, they were so cheap, you know, they're practically giving them to me. That's uh, one of the great things about uh, record store uh, hunting. Anyway, um, now this is a... Um, they were very uh, powerful and melodic uh, bands. Um, they definitely had their own identity. I mean, yeah, they do have kind of the '80s cliche, but then again, you know, they you know, definitely had their own, you know, uh, their look and their sound it was, you know, definitely theirs. I mean, you could, I mean, any metalhead could tell right away they weren't just some run-of-the-mill uh, hair band from L.A. or you know, whatever a copycat scene was going on, you know, around that time, you know, the big hair band era. But, uh, you know, it was pretty much, you know, commercially accessible. Um, the, I guess you'd call it commercial metal. But at the same time, you know, their songs were very powerful. I mean, very moving. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, the vocals were, you know, very high melodic singing. Uh, especially, you know, 10,000 Lovers, Everyone's a Star, which is on this album. And uh, so definitely look up their songs on YouTube, you know, check out some, you know, old vintage video clips. But I mean, if you want like the good hair bands, you know, so-called, you know, that actually had some, you know, musically more viable and, you know, more substance than, say, Poison, I mean, these guys, you know, blew them out of the water musically. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't do as good as Poison commercially, at least stateside. Um... Yeah, actually, this band's, uh, their commercial success was more in uh, Japan and uh, in Europe and, and has been for, you know, a, a good long while. I mean, they did have, you know, some degree of commercial success in the States, especially, like, with this album and with these two, but... Uh, you know, they pretty much came and went on the American scene, you know, were forgotten about because, you know, U.S. radio rock is so bland anyway. And I'm sorry to say that about my own country, but generally I think American rockers are so, you know, narrow when it comes to, you know, knowing what good music really is. Anyway, um, this is our other one. This one is actually a little more more poppy, but, you know, still has some really good... Uh, you know, good hard hitting tracks. Like I love the title track Intuition, Tonight I'm Falling. Um I love F Forever Shine On. That's actually like my most favorite, probably like the strongest track on Forever Shine On. I think that's like that's the most powerful track on the album. But uh my other songs that you know I favor the most would be, you know, Tonight I'm Falling, uh Intuition but uh, um, all in all, this is a really good album. And actually, like a lot of what was funny about this band was actually a lot of people that you know were into the you know thrash metal that probably wouldn't give you know where glam was the arch enemy. Actually, a lot of them like this band because you know of the quality of the musicianship. I mean, Ronnie Latecro was a excellent guitar player, and uh, you know. Um, you know, Tarney Harnell's vocals. I wish I could sing like him. I mean, I'd love to do a TNT cover as a set, but I'm not a good enough musician, and I, I, I'm not a, I'm not good enough to pull off those, uh, you know, high notes like Tony Harnell. And uh, that's why I play punk because I'm less talented. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
Yeah, definitely one of my all-time favorites. And uh, funny story of why I uh, got turned on to TNT. Well, because you know I have a, you know I'm half Scandinavian. You know my grandma telling me about how the family came from Sweden. And you know at the time, you know I was living in Germany because my dad was in the army and. Uh, you know, I read somewhere and also heard from a friend that they came from Norway, which is, you know, Sweden's next door neighbor. So, you know, because, you know, I was, you know, infatuated with Scandinavia, and I still am, um, I had to have it because somebody said they're from Norway. Yeah, I, I went and bought their albums without having heard them because I heard they're from Norway. I mean, it was the same thing about, you know, Swedish bands. I would actually buy hard rock and heavy metal albums from bands just because I heard they were from Sweden. Because, you know, I guess, you know, when I was a lot younger, Scandinavia was some kind of wonderful, magical rock and roll place. And, uh... It is a beautiful place, you know. I think it's the most beautiful part of the world. Anyway, away from geography, I'm going to talk about another very special album in my life. This is uh, Mars, which is the acronym for McAlpine, Aldridge Rock, Sarzo, which is a guitar, uh, basically guitar hero, uh, Tony McAlpine, and made a lot of, you know, the, the instrumental metal albums, Aldridge, who Tommy Aldridge, the drummer, Rock, Rob Rock, who's, you know, one of the greatest voices in metal ever. I'm jealous. I wish I had his voice. And Sarzo, Rudy Sarzo, who is in Quiet Riot. And, uh... I guess uh, this is what you'd call this, you know, in the 80s, they'd have every now and then uh, see super groups, but really like the um, super groups tended to have a lifespan of about, I don't know, uh, five hours, <laughs> you know, they just, they get together and make one album and then, you know, they break apart and you never hear, I mean, I mean, actually when Mr. Big came out, you know, people were calling him the super group and assumed it was one of those, but, uh, no, um, I know I'll talk about Mr. Big. I'm going to focus on these guys. And it's Project Driver, which is the album. I don't know if it's the name of the group or the album title. And then it's Mars. So it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was Mars. McAlpine, Aldridge, Rock, Sarzo. Um, here it is. You know, it's an eight song out. Nine song. You know, very good, you know, straight up, forward, you know, Hard rock and metal, you know, no frills. I mean, this uh, you know came out in the mid '80s, about you know 1986. Um, put on Shrapnel Records. Um, actually, like, what was uh, distinct about Shrapnel Records from you know all the other you know, you know, Johnny Come Lately heavy metal labels of the day was. Uh, their specialty was more the technical heavy metal bands and you know where there was an emphasis on musicianship and it wasn't just you know a bunch of you know bland arena rock for the masses i mean it was like musicians playing for other metal musicians and um you know this guy you know he's you know he's had his solo albums probably his biggest uh, claim to fame greatest singer in the world was him impelitary um he's uh what other groups has he done a set with um another band called driver which i guess was a spin-off of this rudy sarzo and tommy aldridge he was in quiet riot i don't really know a lot about his history but i know these two guys right here they went on to join white snake after this album you know when uh, you know david coverdale decided to reform the lineup to make himself look good and you know this is like one of the most you know unrecognized guitar shredders i mean in within metal tony mcalpine is awesome but uh uh he's uh yeah real good technical player and uh, mainly he does like you know a lot of instrumental and um more of the you know shredder metal albums you know and uh yeah, that's about it. And, um, you know, if you see this in a secondhand record store or, you know, can hunt a CD down online or, you know, or maybe you could probably check some songs out on YouTube. But uh, this is really a good album, you know, for those. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, they, 
They made one good album and then they went away. And okay, that's enough from uh, Joe's Record Store. Rock on.